Hello everyone and welcome to another Isolation Station with me, Skari, your grateful host. We are here in the studio in the Spire. It is April 2nd, Thursday, and we are continuing our daily coverage of doing hobby while in isolation. So sit back, relax, get your painting stuff up. We do this... Um, Every day on Twitch from 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And every other day on YouTube. Um, so we can do a couple of things. Today is a very special uh, tutorial style day. So if you're watching out there, we're going to do a, basically a step-by-step. -step, taking the Raider and Venom... Um, the Raider and Venom uh, Warriors... Uh, or witches, essentially, which are normally something like this. So you have, like, that sort of model, right? You can see there, okay? And we're going to turn it into something like this, which is a playable miniature on the tabletop. Like that, you as well, as a Dark Eldar player, can grab those models and turn them into something that you can use. Or the other one that I like to show off as well is does is the other way around essentially which is this guy here right and turn them into something like this kind of cool right so let's get started hello tyler hello alexander hello everybody on the twitch page thank you very much for tuning in primaries powerhouse elgin prankster war mistress I hope everybody is doing excellently today. So, what are the tools that you are going to need for this tutorial? You're going to need a trusty, trusty X-Acto knife. Make sure you don't cut yourself with this. These guys, if you're um, at home and you're not of the age, make sure you ask your parents before you get, can use one of these. Um, this is a dental pick, a dental scraper, essentially. You can go to a surplus store and buy a bunch of dental equipment for very cheap. These work great for handling green stuff and things like that. You also need either plastic glue or um, super glue. I do have some liquid green stuff, but we also have regular green stuff that you can mix in as well. And then you need um, the bits and the models. Oh, and of course your clippers, because uh, now these clippers, by the way, the old Games Workshop clippers. And... Um, yeah, they've been with me for about 15 years, and they're still going strong. So, or, yeah, more than that, maybe 15 years or so. So, hello, Master Light Curl. Hello, welcome, welcome, one and all. <clears throat> Let's begin, shall we? Logging into both chats, says Prankster. I love it. Getting into both Twitch and YouTube because you've got the spirit. So what have we been working on this week? We've been doing some Venom. So uh, yesterday, at the end of this video, once we've done one or two of the models, if we have time, I'm going to be doing some basing. So we'll show you how to do some cool basing on um, the Venom itself. We're going to be making some scenic bases on these Venom uh, things just to make sure that they sort of fit in to the theme that we're going for, which is revamping your army and making some cool things. So we've got two of these guys. We need to make three more for this Cowblight Warrior unit. We also have the new Incubi that we worked on. Those eyes are ready to be primed, so I'm very excited about that. I didn't go too big on their bases because the models themselves are new. Um, so I don't really, like when a model is brand new, I like to just paint it as it's brand new and just kind of let the newness of the model sort of shine through. I also have a delicious cup of tea. So I highly recommend that as a part of your hobby. Uh, this isn't actually Tim Horton's coffee. It's regular breakfast tea. Mm. It's hot though. Mm -mm. Yeah, these are some old clippers. They don't make them like they used to. I've clipped many a thing with these clippers. Okay, so we've got two of these guys. We're also going to need bases. Luckily, I have a, a little stack of bases that I keep a bunch of bases on. Boom, boom. As you can see here, uh, they're the Necromunda bases that you can get, like a pack of Necromunda bases, like 20 to a pack or something. 
and then I've just put a little bit of sand on them to kind of break them apart. Kind of keeps it in line with the rest of my bases across my entire army, and that's kind of what I'm going for here as well. Another thing that we'll be doing is we'll be using some of the Witch Cult um, riders from the Venom as well. So those are super exciting because they're just a little different. And what I'm going to be doing is trying to morph them with, with the raider bits as well. So as an example, if I can actually find these dang pieces. Are these the pieces here? Yeah, perfect. So witches are well known. Oh, because they have, oh, they have one armored leg. And they have one non-armored leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to take, I'm probably going to take a leg from one of these guys and then morph it onto like a witch leg or change the pose by putting a witch leg onto the Kabbalite warrior. So that'll, that's definitely going to be, look at that. <laughs> that'll be a fun one. Um, Ghosts from the webway, hello, stuck all the way in Italy, finally caught this, you always do it when I have class, love the amount of extras you get in Drukari sets, oh yes, definitely, and this is what we're doing is we're just using some of these extras. So the most simple way of doing one is by grabbing this guy here, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a guy that's very similar to this, like pose, walking, nothing crazy, but the way you do that, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab this arm here, and you're just going to say bye bye arm you want to be careful with the little there's a little pipe that's like a oh and that's gone quick and easy that's it doesn't take too much to really sort of figure out what you need to do there then you use your exacto knife to just kind of trim around where the shoulder pad was and you can cut it in you want to make sure you keep a nice um, straight line if at all possible you want to keep that little drug um, vial like thing essentially. And then you go here, down like this. And then of course, uh, this little piece back here is specifically because it's designed for special back piece. And what you want to do is you want to try stick a skull in the leg. Yes, that's what I did with him. He's got a little skull piece basically from the homunculus kit which I use there, but it's kind of cool using all these different kits to make some really fun, some really fun stuff. I also want you to guys to come say hello to the Trueborn, who's, uh, oh, come in, come into shop. There you go. Look there, that's the camera right there. Hello. Hey, this is Ollie. He's being a trooper during this isolation period. What kind of things are you doing to stay busy? Um, I'm playing with my Lego. I'm just playing... I'm playing video games. I am. Uh, You're learning reading, lots. Reading books. Reading? You read? Yeah. What? Sometimes. Yeah. Do. Yes, he does. He reads a lot. And filming battle reports with your papa. Yeah, we just did a new. We one. just did a new battle report that went up for Patreons, and will be coming out for the regular public uh, on Friday. Yeah, but Patreons can already watch that as a thank you for supporting the channel on Patreon. Kind of cool, right? Are you looking forward to doing another one sometime? Yeah, next year. Next year? Whoa. So we'll do one a year, eh? Until two a, until year. Two a year. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, Ollie. Well, I'm going to let you go, but thank you very much for coming to say hello. You're amazing. Yeah, they're cool, right? And we'll finish your Sisters of the Thorn later. Okay, cool. That was Ollie, Bye. everybody. Bye. <clears throat> uh, Ghost of the Webway says he likes how you're painting your elves. Thank you. He says thank you. <laughs> okay, so then another thing we do is we cut that little piece out. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that the back piece that we use, so we're getting like a back piece, that back piece fits in nicely there. Right, and if you don't cut out that piece, then the back piece won't fit in because it's designed to be a very specific back piece that has like a little hole in it, essentially, because of the fact that it's like designed for it. And uh, you can kind of fit a couple of them just to make sure that you get one that you like or that fits nicely on the shoulder blades, essentially, so that you don't see like a big line. Now, it doesn't, you don't have to worry about if there's a hole there because that's where. 
the head is going to go, so don't worry about that too much. And then uh, I use an X-Acto knife for the uh, the little mold lines, but you can really use anything. It's um, a combination of things. The biggest thing is don't like don't don't try and be too careful. Like you, it's going to get painted over anyway. The mold lines, it's good to get rid of them though, so that if you dry brush or you you know ink wash or something like that. Um, you know, it comes out. But I'd love to see if you're working on anything new or, or like, uh, you're just inspired by anything. Please uh, reach out to me, send me a message, link up what you're working on in the comments and description down below, especially since we're all stuck in the middle of nowhere. Reek the Forgotten, thank you very much for the follow on Twitch. You, sir, are a boss man. Thank you. Good morning, Alpharius. Primaris Powerhouse gifting a sub to Alpharius. Ah, uh, thanks a lot, Rob. Really appreciate it. And Matt, you are now an official sub <laughs> of the Twitch stream. Um, and hello, Kyle, everybody who's in here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mall security. Good morning, Garbanzo Bean Donut. Reek the Forgotten. Hello, welcome, welcome. Okay, so we've got that guy there. Okay. And now we've got that back then. So that's the basic part of the model. Now, of course, you can see here he's got that piece of a shoulder blade. We don't need that piece of the shoulder blade, so we're gonna cut it off. There is a little extra pipe there, which is another part of that drug dispenser pipe. So you wanna be very careful you don't cut that piece off. So, you know, just kinda cut around it. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is we end, we're gonna use a Helion shoulder blade, because Helions come with extra shoulder blades you can put on them. I want to buy more stuff to work on, says Master Light Curl. But I can't. Yes, that is true. Some people, you know, don't have access to uh, a store that, that ships to them. Now, if you're looking for something, I know the Hooded Goblin is still shipping. They are one of the official channel sponsors. If you want any 40K stuff and while stocks last, you know, they will ship it out to you. And they're giving discounts to everybody who orders through them during this isolation period. Normally, we have like a specific Patreon <laughs> deal where you get a discount for being a Patreon. However, um, they're extending a deal to everybody who orders during this time. So make sure you check them out. The link is down in the bottom as well as Testiminis who has the same sort of deal. I have a big warehouse and they will ship anything out to you that you need. Mm. Okay, so now we've got that. So we have a nice flat area there that we can put an arm on essentially. That's like one of the most important parts. And then we have the leg. Right, so then we just have to find his leg, or we can use, I, can, I really kind of want to use this witch leg. So I think that would be really cool. However, I feel that it would be a little awkward to get in there. You know, because we don't really have plasma grenades. However, you know, like here we are trying to figure something out that works for everybody. So you might as well, okay, so if I get the other leg actually, I can maybe find a nice way to make it stick. So I'm gonna get the other leg. Ah, I just came back. No, the stream didn't die. I hope it did die. I hope the stream's okay. I want the Noise Marine Sonic guns. I can't find them anywhere. Those Sonic guns, yeah, they look really cool. I'm actually really curious to see how Okay, so there we have that there. So how can we make make that mimic that? So basically you just have to cut in there and basically cut it nice and flat. Okay. Okay, here goes. Sometimes you just have to cut first and ask questions later. <laughs> Usually that's how that works. Okay, so we did that pretty much. We're gonna have to basically cut a little bit of a hole in here. You know, that's the thing, like when you're doing conversions and stuff like this, it's okay to mess up a piece, you know, and sacrifice a piece for the greater good of the conversion and then be okay with it later. I'm definitely sure we don't need this piece here. And then I'm pretty sure we won't need this grenade. So we can cut that grenade out of the picture. I'm not sure if we'll need that second grenade. However, We do something like that. Okay. Hmm. 
think that grenade's a little bit too pungent in terms of in that vial. So if we cut it, there's always like there's a little plat, there's a little pistol and other grenades and stuff that I can glue to sort of you know even it out here. But if I make this just a leg, right? So we straighten it out so it just looks like just a leg. And then we can kind of mold it. <laughs> Maybe use a little bit of green stuff to fill in some of the spots. The idea here is me just sort of spitballing an idea, right? Because what I'd like to do is make every single one of these guys a little different, right? And it's okay to kind of have an idea and then have it like fall through if it doesn't exactly fit like your vision. But here you can see there, if I had a leg and it was like the leg to leg, it just means that this is also a little too long here. So you can cut off a little bit here at the end. Right. All that's going to do is going to shorten the leg a little bit. It might look a little weird, but it's so bent anyway. You know, a lot of people won't really notice. There you go. Something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little bit on this area here, like this, and straighten that out. See if I can make <laughs> make it fit in there. Boom. See. Now it looks a lot more akin to something that I want to achieve here, which is perfect. However, that guy has to kind of go in there, right? So if I do that there, it doesn't really fit with that, so with like his angle. So I have to cut this guy just a little bit more here. So I wanna make sure that fits in there. Do you know of any Rough Rider models? Because obviously GW doesn't make any. I have an old set of Rough Riders. If you want it, just pay for shipping. I'll send it to you. I've got uh, the old uh, the old ones with the big furry hats. Yeah. Don't have the horses, though. You'd have to get yourself a set of horses. Hello, Ajakar. Love how you're not scared to scrape and cut the models to make them fit the way you want. Thanks. You know, that's kind of how this works, you know? You kind of want to make sure that this sort of fits in that in that sort of sense there. It's all about just kind of being creative, you know, and, and letting your... That's, that's part of what we do in this hobby. You know, there's one thing, like, after playing the game for so long, you know, you play for so many years, you know, it's... Um, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> they have the sonic weapons on their website. There you go, buddy. That's the spirit. <laughs> Just tell them I sent you. Um, I'm glad you found your sonic weapons. Now to get them shipped to you. You'd be surprised what you they have in stock sometimes. Just posted on this skirt that Astartes Part 5 is going to release today. Yes, Astartes Part 5 is releasing today around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're doing a premiere for it, which I'm super pumped for. If you don't know what Astartes is, make sure you check them out on YouTube. I believe he's also the guy they got to paint uh, to do a lot of, some of the animations for the new uh, GW like animated series and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. Okay, so we've butchered this leg enough, I think. I think it's going to fit about exactly what I wanted it to. It's not going to be super perfect. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a grenade or something just on that little spot there. Another trick of the trade is plastic glue melts plastic. Red Badger says, hell yes, part five. Yes, super pumped about that. But plastic glue melts plastic, right? So I have no shame putting a little bit extra on the model or on the areas that I want, and then just kind of like smooshing them together because it'll melt the plastic and sort of fill in the gaps as well. And you get like, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of mooshing it together and kind of moving it back and forth so that it melts and it gets everywhere. Once it dries, it'll dry like as a, as a concoction of plastic essentially, which sort of acts a little bit like green stuff in that sense, right? And it'll fill in any of those like gaps and things like that, like at least minor gaps. 
It's kind of what you want, right? So there you go, right? It doesn't actually look like I cut that model almost at all, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you can see that, but you know, so now we can kind of let that guy sit and you can see he's got a really cool pose now where he's like leaping forward. So we're probably either gonna do a leaping forward like this, right? So he's gonna be on the back of his base and we're gonna put something on the back of his base for him to leap forward like that. And then I might actually give him some sort of a, uh, I might give him like the blaster or something to kind of show him kind of advancing forward and being just super dangerous. And we'll see. So that's the first step there. And then we can always do the second step, which is putting on the backpack or the back area. Another thing you can do to kind of, you know, keep it all up and run it. There that. Of course, be careful with the leg that you just glued. <laughs> Don't get overly excited about that leg and then, you know, push it or like move it. You want to let it dry. Okay, I've always tried I always have that wince just before I cut, like I really hope this works. I agree, sometimes you just gotta go with your instinct, just snip it and go for it. The old melted plastic and a bit of green stuff to smooth it over technique, says Stuart Reed. That's right, hobbyists, melted plastic and a little bit of green stuff. Have you ever used a hairdryer or a heat gun to soften the plastic, change the position of a model? I have not, actually. Um, I've you the, the extent I've gone to is use hot hot water to get resin pieces to kind of fit back into place that's about as about as far as I'd go with that in terms of you know that at all the Jenks virus says hey Scary hi I have a rules question three units charge my three units okay first unit kills my character okay I use fight after I die stratagem and he kills some models can I now use the interrupt stratagem? Yes. Yes, you can. Because um, the fight as you die happens like before you remove the model. So you fight as you die. And you basically use them both, you know, as soon as the opposing unit has fought. So then the player whose turn it is would just determine which order it would go in technically. But I don't think there's anything says you can't do that. Akajara says, just joined the Patreon. Looking forward to have a chat with you on how I can build my Dark Eld army. Yeah, no problem. Ajakar, thanks a lot for the support on Patreon. Yeah, I know right now there's a lot of, um, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, you know, some people have, you know, had to cut down on their, their like, fun money, right? In terms of, you know, uh, Patreon support and stuff like that. So, so... You know, I, I do appreciate all the support that I am getting through this time. You guys are fantastic, and thank you so much. Um, I'm going to continue to create content and put stuff up, and if people want to help out, awesome. If you want to join up and be part of the community, the links are all in the description down below. And if you're a homunculus, why cover them up? <laughs> exactly. Using guns for legs actually is not a bad if you cover them up, in my experience, if you want more models. Actually, I've done that too. Like my, we used a bit of sprue one time to make an inquisitor. We used the top part of uh, Space Marine and my brother did this conversion. And then he just put like little sprue sticks and then he covered them with a little bit of green stuff, green stuff as like a, like a cloak. So the guy had little sticks as legs, but a cloak that made him look like he had feet. You know, that covered the ground. So he got a whole Inquisitor out of that. That was back in the day when we made every bit count. You know, as a new hobbyist, you're literally trying to make sure every little piece of your army counts. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> super important, right? Um, <clears throat> no problem, J Virus. How uh, I do that for Smash Captain. Cool. There's G G Booty Man. Oh, man, I remember you. How have you been, buddy? My pleasure. We'll hang out in the Discord after you stream. We've got a few minutes to answer my questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's continue this conversion. After all, this is a how-to video, not just a let's sit and chat with Scary video. Although it does dive into that because I have the... Um, ooh, a squirrel. I was going to say something, and I completely forgot what I was going to say. Um... 
Okay, so I like using a lot. I have a, a big bin of old cities of death and like stuff like that, um, kits and whatnot. And a lot of the times, actually, I don't want to use that because I want to use those for later. But I love using like all these old pieces and stuff to make and to enhance bases and things like that. So in this case, I've got this literally this old piece of like metal rivety pipe or whatever. And that's going to be the, like the perfect sort of lunge point for this guy. Maybe a little bit more angled like this. So it's like straight up. That's where I get my trusty cutters and I cut a heavier angle. Perfect. And then we can cut it down just a little bit so it's not so tall. Dun, dun, dun. Is the hobby squirrel that Brian from Survive Past? <laughs> yeah, it's the hobby squirrel. Like I'll be talking about something and I'll be like, okay, let's uh, let's do this. And then I totally get distracted. <laughs> and then I totally forget about what I was talking about. Whoops, a daisy. <laughs> Ultimentra, yo, Ultimentra. What's up? I just bought the Blood of the Phoenix box set to my Drukariami. Ah, the dark kin. I like it. We infect the entire planet. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We are all over. Stuart Reed says, content like this is great at the moment, by the way, dude. Hey, thanks. Really appreciate it, man. UK GW web store is completely out of stock for everything, so getting models at the moment is a pain. Yeah. No worries, man. We gotta, we gotta do what we can with what we got, right? Is that how it works? Tiva Robbie, hello, I'm well, thank you. Having fun. Something that keeps me sane in this time is coaching, because I do uh, 40K coaching through the Art of War and through the Patreon page. Um, so that keeps me sane. I've been playing a lot of Dawn of War lately, and I've been converting these models and making, trying to make them look pretty snazzy. So the reason I just cut out this little piece from this base, so a little section there, um, is only so that when I put this little pipe down, it has contact points on this on this uh, like L piece right here. So what I'm going to do here is that's going to go there like that, and it's going to basically touch up against those two parts of the L there, which is going to give it a nice strong contact point, which is what I want. So then I can put the model on, and I don't have to worry about the, his like the stand that he's on falling off. Always make sure that if the little piece you're using or converting with has pa has paint on it or glue on it, scrape it to, to uh, especially if you're using plastic glue, scrape it so that it exposes the plastic so that when you put the plastic on plastic with plastic glue, it will bond together, make a strong bond so that it won't break. The game with Ollie was great. Thank you, TV Robbie. I have so much fun filming with my with my son. It's super, super entertaining. Um, like I like the banter between the two of you. I know it's like a full on banter, and it's more him than me. His banter is crazy. <laughs> he has no shame telling me how much I suck. <laughs> uh, Ultimentra says, I'm getting pretty good deals on stuff on eBay. Yeah, well, a lot of people have been laid off and things like that, at least in this time. So I'm assuming, you know, getting rid of like your collection, even though, you know, it kind of stings and hurts, right? You know, it's one of the first things to go when you just need that extra bit of cash, right? Okay, so let's leave that there. It's going to dry and look amazing. And then we're going to glue this guy onto there and he's going to be leaping forwards and be like, we are like this. Look at that. Oh, it's going to look so cool, eh? Considering we started from a, uh, started from a, uh, a raider rider. Oh yeah. That's going to be a whole new model for my collection. Okay. So let's, um, work on this guy here. So here we have uh, this guy here as well, while that guy sort of dries up a little bit. Now, the last one we did with this one, something like this. So you can see here, right? Uh, two kind of like different models there. Now I'm gonna do one of my favorites, which is actually uh, leaving the model as is. 
and then using a bit of terrain to sort of make the pose fit in your collection. So that's something I'm going to do here with this. So um, that means that I'm not going to cut anything like this or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find its backpack or the back set that's good for it. Hopefully I can find that. Buenos dias, the Drake. Thane Drake. ¿Cómo estás? Un saludo a usted y a toda la familia. Oh, I found the actual <laughs> real ones. What, what, what? Okay, there we go. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, so I found the back piece for him. So I don't have to change the back piece. Don't have to change that. We can keep the leg as the leg that you're normally going to use for this model. Which is this guy right here. Like this. So we'll just clean him up. And we're essentially going to create a model based on the pose that is already on there. So this is like a bit of an easier way of doing these conversions for these uh, Raider pieces, um, is using the model as is. So this is a good example of that. Something that you will be using, however, is uh, one of my favorite pieces from the old uh, Cities of Death, is these, um, these uh, um, what are they? They're called uh, lamp posts. There you go. <laughs> An old, ye old lamp post. So I just have to cut this down because apparently somebody glued it on real, real good with plastic glue here. So got to get rid of this here. There we go. Although for the whole set that I made, like the we painted the whole. Um, um, realms of battle table. I'm gonna grab all the extra ones I have of these. I'm gonna make like a whole bunch of little uh, things and stuff for that. So, okay. So we might end up cutting this anyway. But essentially, the whole purpose of this is to kind of basically do something like this. So you see how he's got like that little bit to hang off of, and he's essentially gonna hang on this, and then this piece is gonna be basically pushing off of this here something like that. So we'll end up having a dude that's literally carrying a big lamppost around. He's one of my favorite miniatures. I actually have one in my army, but I'm going to make another one because why not? Red Badger says, don't you have a cab light warrior swinging around a lantern on the base singing in the rain style? Yes, that is true. As I said, I already have one in my army, but I'm making another one to show you guys how it's done. Just scrape paint off it. <laughs> For anyone who's not familiar, the theme of my live stream is just put paint on it. And it's designed to be sort of like a take on just put paint on it. AKA, when in doubt, when you need inspiration, when you're looking for something to do, hashtag just put paint on it. Because the easiest solution to every problem that you have in life is to sit down and hobby. Whether you're having a rough day at work or marital problems, or your kids are driving you crazy, sitting down at the end of the day and hashtag just putting paint on it is sometimes all the respite that we need as hobbyists. So yes, the theme of what we do is just put paint on it. And I hope that you guys enjoy sitting back and relaxing and painting and doing hobbying with me. Okay, there we go. So it's good to kind of, when you're trying to cut something off like that, make sure you cut off like all the little pieces, right? Cut it off in chunks, and like that'll help save most of the model. Alpharius says, I continue to preach this for you in the Hydra Factory. Awesome. Alpharius, of course, starting his Hydra Factory streaming. He's on his way to um, affiliate, so make sure you check him out. We are going to raid his stream uh, to when we finish our daily stream like we've done every single day So make sure you stick around with him for another couple hours or another hour or so after and he'll be doing he's doing a lot more painting techniques Blending and glazing and spraying with his uh, airbrush and stuff like that So he he's definitely got a lot more painting know-how than I have. I'm more of a layman's painter but uh, Matt does beautiful work. You've seen his stuff on the channel before Make sure you check him out in the Hydra Factory. That's Alpharius242 on Twitch. 
Jungar had a bunch of heli on boards and took the hanging riders off the transports and converted them to scourges. Nice. No, I'm Alfarius, <laughs> says the <De> booty. <laughs> Everybody's Alfarius. No, I'm Alfarius. No, I'm Alfarius. I believe we are all correct. We are all Alfarius. Okay, so I want to see if I can put this on here without having to do any cutting. Seems so. So I should be able to put that on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the mold lines on this guy. And then I'm going to glue it so that it has a chance to sort of dry while we work on the model. Like that, as it dries, we can work on the miniature. And then by the time the miniature is done, the glue should be dry enough that it won't like warp with the weight of the miniature on the model. Now, something that I do recommend is when you're making a game piece, something like this, like this pointy thing can be super, super dangerous. You know, when you're getting down to block line of sight or check line of sight, you know, I highly recommend you just, even though that's an anti-Dark Eldar thing to do, as a safety person, just, just clip off like super pointy things like that that could gouge someone's eye out. It's a health tip from your friend Skari. More squig content on the channel later. Yeah, uh, uh, Matt's been painting his really squig hoppers from Age of Sigmar. We, we've been going on like an Age of Sigmar binge in the local community doing like a slow grow league while we're all in isolation painting and building age of sigma models and when this is all done we're having a little thousand point event which is going to be super fun so we're encouraging everybody to get those thousand points of age of sigma stuff finished saludos lorenzo Savala desde chile gracias oye un saludo desde desde canada el otro lado del mundo <laughs> Good morning, Sharonin. What's going on? Nice to see you. Really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for saying hello. Also, if anybody wants to share what they're working on, hey, put a link in the description. This is a quick little how-to video that we're doing. But you guys can also post your how-to videos and all that good stuff as we go. Okay, so that's actually in the right pose as well because you want this to be backwards on the base and then this to be here. So the model will be right here, which will actually be perfect for this. And then once again, don't be shy on that plastic glue. That plastic glue is going to, going to keep, her, keep it going, which is super exciting. There's also a contact point on this side, so we're going to put a little bit on there and a contact point on that side. So we're going to put a little on there. Because then, oh, you've got two contact points there on that L. And just let the plastic glue put it in. Stuart says, blue tack is great for stopping spiky bits going near eyes when you snip them. That is also true. I'm just painting a Lehman Russ, says Djibouti. Awesome. Won't be by for the early stream, Alfarious shift at work. Hey, that's we do what we can. We all hang out when we can. Ralph Ferris will be doing his PM stream as well, which is super exciting because he does an AM and a PM stream. Okay, so there we go. We have the lamp post. We have the little lungeon place for the lungeon guy. Lungeon. Lungeon is what I do. Lungeon is how I do it. So I'm going to put the lungeon guy on. Hopefully we can get him to stick and not fall off. So plenty of the glue, and then I want to angle him to make sure that the model is kind of like in a pose, and you want to kind of hold it in place while the, the plastic glue sort of takes hold. But Alfarius has been doing two streams a day. He's been doing an AM stream and a PM stream, which has been great, especially when we're all in isolation trying to keep our spirits up. Now something else that I like to do, a little trick of the trade, is when you have a model that's at an angle drying, you can use like a pot or something, kind of put a pot, and just get one contact point, like in this case is like right up against the knee, all it does is it stops it from sliding forward. It's very, very subtle, but it just stops that as it dries, that the weight of the model doesn't kind of drag the, the, the knee downward, so it stays at the angle that we wanted it to stay. Okay, so over here, I'm going to start doing some mold lines on this guy while everything else dries. But if you can see here, we got 
tons of little pieces and bits. If you had a terrain project, these little pieces and bits then work great for rubble and stuff for your terrain for your terrain project. Because you can mix them into like a putty or something, even these like spiky bits, and just create like a jumble of terrain pieces, like just 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 filler, you know, something that I'm gonna be doing, like rubble piles and whatnot. You kinda use this for rubble piles. Heard you say lunging guy and thought of my old guardsman. Did a dual wielding chainsword. Nice. That sounds excellent, by the way. Hello and salutations to everybody who just tuned in to the channel. Uh, welcome to how we're doing stuff. We're just painting and we're converting some uh, really cool, uh, just converting old raider bits. So if you have a bunch of stuff lying around, get your converting hats on. Just going to do some. Um, now, something else that I do, especially with these legs, the Dark Elder, have all these little, like, spike bits on them. I literally just shave them off to get those mold lines. A lot of the times, it's really annoying to go through, like, past every single one of those spikes and get the mold line in between. I've just decided that I'm just going to shave right over everything and just take them off. Uh, it also saves me from having to paint a million little spikes on the leather. And then I only have to do the ones at the front, the ones at the back, and don't have to worry about the sides. And it just makes my life easier. Uh, and then we got all these little pieces over here. Now, the more you do a model, the more you know exactly where the mold lines are. So it becomes like more and more like relevant to building a model. You can just kind of find the mold lines that are like going to be exposed or whatever, depending on how in depth you want to make it or where you cut the, the piece off the sprue. Those are like the two hot spots, right? <laughs> Heiko, what's going on? Nice to see you. Yeah, those leg spikes along the mole lines are annoying. I often just shave them off too. Yep, you got it, Red Badger. You understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> Which is exactly how that works. <laughs> Um, by the way, if you guys have any 40k related questions uh, in regards to hobbying and or playing, this is also an opportunity for you to sort of like ask me questions, things like that about the game. I went to Reddit and posted my most recent concoction of army list on the 40k competitor page. I posted it when I went to bed and I woke up and there was like a you know, bunch of comments on it and stuff. So I spent most of the morning explaining why my new list makes sense. And how I like it. Yep. Just ordered a box of Incubi, says Heiko. Guess who gave me the idea? This guy. Jacob Sickler says, you've been getting a lot of work done due to this pandemic. Have you been getting a lot of work done? Uh, well, this is my work, Jacob. Um, so, yes. Mole Security, thank you so much for the gifted sub. You've given 23 gift subs on the channel. You are a boss man. Thank you very much for your support. Are Incubi actually good? I think I answered this question a couple of days ago, um, but I will answer it again because it's important. Incubi in a vacuum are excellent. They are absolutely amazing. They, for the point cost, what you get, you know, the number of attacks you get, the strength, the AP, the ability to do multiple damage on a target, you know, it's it's excellent for, you know, 70 points, whatever it is. However, however, when it comes to practical sense in a competitive environment, they are just toughness three with a three up save and one wound. They usually die very, very quickly. So although they have a great damage output, point for point efficiency, that sort of thing, they just don't have the survivability that you would expect from a close combat unit that you would need for a close combat unit. You know, a lot of the close combat armies that you see, Centurions or uh, Sanguinary Guard or Wolfen, they have some sort of built-in durability. TV Robbie says, you gave me the Incubi idea. Yeah, you actually got me the Incubi. So thank you very much, TV Robbie. And I painted the um, the witch, the banshees and stuff for you, which was super, super fun. Ah, there we go. So now we've got this guy hanging off. Ba-boom, look at that, eh? 
Now what we need is something on it. So we want to make sure it's like a natural hang, like that, so that it hangs nicely. And then what we're going to put, we're going to put like another piece on it there to make sure that you have a piece to hang off of or that it's a piece of rubble that you get to swing off of like that. Something like that. Speed. Hey, Exendar, what's going on? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, the speed isn't a problem. You can get Incubi into combat relatively easily with relative ease. I don't want to have to grab that. <laughs> Um, you can get them into combat with relative ease simply because you can put them in a raider or venom or whatever. Mm -mm -mm. He poofed? Went to mention him and he said he's not here. Who? Who poofed? Oh, more security? He might have. He's in and out because of work and stuff a lot of the time, so... Canadian 90, in my opinion, they're playable. You could never play them and you wouldn't, you could never play them and you wouldn't be. Yes, that's true. That's actually a good way to put it. You could never play them and you would not be making a mistake. A mistake. Yes, I agree. I 100% agree. That's the thing about Incubi is they have like, they have like this, this niche. Now, if you do want to use them, I highly recommend you use them as Inari. As an Ari, they have a tendency to actually be quite decent. Uh, just their damage output is greatly increased with the addition of um, with the addition of the Inari stratagems, because they get a reroll wound stratagem, which then makes them actually really, really dangerous. Boom, so something like that. So you can see there, we've kind of put it on. If the model stays without any, any help or support, you're always on a good track. You know, easy, a little top heavy. Yeah, it's not too top heavy, so that's not bad. Swing in like an orangutan. <laughs> Great idea with the lantern, love it. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you enjoy the idea as well. You know, we're just repurposing some old models or some models that are used for differently. I love the paint work you did on Jane Zar and the Howling Banshees, says TV Robbie. Also, does Jane Zar and the Howling Banshees sound like an 80s cartoon rock band? Yes, it does. Jane Zar and the Howling Banshees. It is definitely an 80s cartoon rock band. 100%. Archon Pranksis says, do you think it's better to run them in the Raider with Drazar? I prefer running... Well, you can run Drazar in a different detachment of Dark Eldar and then have three units of in of Inari Incubi and then have them in Venoms and then, like, attack in a point. But Venoms and and Incubi work better than Raiders and Incubi because a Raider is big and you can see it and you can shoot it. A Venom is small and you can hide it a lot easier. Plus the two plus to hit impossible reroll ones, I like it a lot. Yes, especially with the Incubi, because you can take the Vizarch and you're rerolling ones to hit, and then you can pick an enemy target and get reroll wounds with Inari. So then you're getting reroll wounds, and if Drazar is nearby, you're stacking the plus one to wound. So you're getting rerolls from the Vizarch, you're getting plus one to wound from Drazar, because he does buff just Incubi, not doesn't matter if they're Drukari or Inari. And then you can just run in and do and do like a whole bunch of damage. Especially because they they their damage pops when they get like the extra extra stuff right for uh for doing um for like um what rolling sixes to wound or whatever sadly that's unmodified but you know hey man this isolation sucks says sam yes it does when all this passes we gotta get a game in says sam yes we gotta get a game in this isolation definitely does suck i am doing games on tabletop simulator so if anybody wants a game on Tabletop Simulator, I have been doing that a lot with uh, coaching clients mainly. But, uh, you know, I've also been playing a lot of Dawn of War. So if you want to have a fun 
game uh, Dawn of War style. <laughs> I'll definitely, you know, I'll definitely rock out. We can have some, we can have some tunes, have some games. It'll be super fun. So, okay, so we got a contact point here. Along the hand, we got a contact point here. We got a contact point here. And then we get to put this guy on there, and on there, and on there. So that. Four. Boom. And there, folks, is a raider that is a raider guy that is going to be part of our army. Soon, we just have to get him a cool weapon of some sort to kind of add in to our cool little band of misfits. It's going to be our little Cabalite warrior squad that's all converted and from bits from all over and stuff like that, which will be super exciting. I'm really excited about doing this lunging guy because he's going to be like, Wah! like charging at you in your face. Sam says, on that note, what do you think of our matchup, Drakari versus Blood Angels? Depends what kind of Blood Angel army you're running. But um, Dark Eldar tend to... I've never really had an issue with Blood Angels unless it's a very shooty Blood Angel army. Then I have the most issue. It's funny how like a close combat Blood Angel army doesn't give me as much grief as a shooty Blood Angel army. Because with close combat armies, I can just kind of skirt and use my high speed to move around and stuff. Um, Djibouti says, what's the easiest way to play strictly Cabal and still be decent in 2,000 points? Take a brigade of Cabal of Blackheart. That's it. Just a brigade. Tons of command points. Take a bit of everything. Amdor, got curious when watching some of your battle reports. Is it usual in the USA to use index stuff, Archon equipment? To be honest, I'm an admic player getting back from my Dark Eld army. Um, index is allowed in ITC. Um, however, Legends is not allowed. So ITC is like the main... Um, the main, like, tournament format that we all kind of play. And, um, it can be confusing sometimes. I try, like, I used a lot of Index stuff in the day, but as soon as the Legends came out, I, like, cut Index out completely. I'm trying to get used to just not relying on any Index choices, so all my new armies don't have any Index choices. But, you know, sometimes people allow Index. Depends on the tournament, really. So it's very swingy. Maul says, sitting on a boring Microsoft call, but listening. Thank you for listening, Maul Security. Also, to all the lurkers out there who aren't chatting, but just have us in the background. Um, Canadian, Azure Car, absolutely. By the way, Tim Hortons, send me money, because I am totally representing you. Even though you're a big corporate company, still. What's in here isn't actually Timmy's tea at all. It's my own tea. Uh, do I use Helions much, says Eglin? I... no. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I can't fandangle that response more than I did. No, I do not. At all. Okay, so I've got my big bits thing. My big bits bin. Okay, so no, I'm not going to use that arm. I definitely need a blaster, I think. Can one of these guys be the blaster? Maybe. So I like, see, I have all these like bits and stuff, right? So I like to kind of pull them all out every once in a while and kind of go through them. And it's very, as I was saying, get yourself like one of these things at like the dollar store, whenever the dollar store is reopened. And you can just, the little like things for, you know, nuts and bolts and stuff and I literally cut all my sprues up and I put like all the weapons here and all the regular stuff here and then I've got like random things in here like I've got an entire Phoenix Lord from Forge World that I need to paint at some point. So hopefully I get that. What's that middle guy leaping? Looks sick. This guy here? Yeah, he's leaping. He's in the other, he's the first guy we converted on the stream. So that's why it's a how to convert Raider and Venom guys into models that you can use into your army, which is super exciting. So that's all I've got for now in terms of that. 
Something I'm probably going to use is this vial here to cover up the butt from that witch cult one. However, I'm trying to find my weapons. Where are all my special weapons? I have shredders, but do I have any blasters left? Or did all my blasters get used up? <laughs> Sad face, maybe. Sharona says, we have such a good community here. Hey, Prankster, thank you so much for the gifted tier sub. Whoa, that's crazy. Oh, Skari, says Shronen. You mentioned how some people squirm on Dawn of War because of Dark Eldar. Squirm. Uh, back when I was still playing, I'd run max difficulty, accelerated startup, all that. If there was a Drukari on that setting, i just lose. <laughs> yeah, Dark Eldar seem to be really powerful, apparently. Um, I've been using them a lot in a Dawn of War and having a ton of fun. Goes to the webway. Djibouti says, is a Tantalus good? Kind of seems expensive what it is. Yes, expensive, and it dies really quickly. If somebody can kill a knight, Tantalus dies instantly. Devin says, What's, what in your mind would make Helions competitive? So you have to run a big 20-man unit. That's like the number one thing. I run them as Inari and have the Incarnate nearby so you can make them fearless. And then you give them a five-up invul save with the psychic power. So it's a lot of setup to make them work, but it can be it can be done. And then you have to run the 20. If not, it doesn't make any sense to do otherwise. Okay, so there are all the other witch riders. I'm pretty sure I have guns somewhere that I can use. It's one of the things about this. Chocobo! Are you playing on Tabletop Simulator? Yes, I am. Um, setting up some games with coaching clients and Patreons, mainly. Just because my time is has to be split between a whole bunch of different things. However, yeah, reach out to me if you want to set up a game. We can we can see about setting up a game with me. Or we can set up a game and you guys can all watch. If you want to watch me play on Tabletop Simulator, I will be playing this Saturday evening. Ah, there's a blaster. Look at that. I, right in front of my face. Um, oh, no, but that's a... I don't want that blaster. I want this blaster. Okay, so blaster. Would it work on leaping, dude? Ha! Leaping with a blaster? How cool is that? Kind of like that idea. I'm going to get you with a blaster. I'm going to run up and blow you up, he says. Okay, well, let's see if we can make it work. Okay. Man, man. Tested the Talos out with minus one damage. It was pretty good. It's not bad. Seems Drukari got odd cut in data sheet count as opposed to most armies. You store in three squads of Trueborn back in fifth. Hope the return of Vect and his dace. Well, I did make a set of custom rules for Vect and his dace um, that's available for download for Patreons. If you want to check it out. It's actually really fun. I used him for the mega game that we used that we did with Kyle and his orcs uh, last year. It was super fun, and I painted him on stream live. It's like three weeks worth of work because there's so many models. Sorry, three weeks worth of streaming, or is it two and a half weeks? Something crazy because he's just everywhere. Greens is best, Buffalo. What models are these? Raider and Venom. Yeah, so. This is the this these are from the raiders. This is from a raider and a venom. This is from a raider. I still have to use the actual witches and convert a venom person. But these are just from the raider guys right now. But I will be using both raider venom pieces. I'm using pieces from the Helion kits. I am just going all out with this. You know, we're making we're making use of our bits box, debing, diving deep into that bits box, bits box and pulling out treasure. Treasure. Yes, treasure. Um, roughly equal to profits, but you miss out on the racks and strat. Yeah. Yeah, the, the minus one damage is really good in certain matchups against stuff that has lots of high damage, but low AP. Right. Uh, I prefer profits of flesh. Like I use profits in my new list just for that relic and just for the, for the black cornucopians. You know, I, I gave up even my my invul save because I have the way that I'm running that list. It's like a toolbox list. 
Mm -mm -mm. I'll probably do like a video on it. I just don't own that many raiders. Well, I actually do. I just have to like repurpose and reconvert a couple of of the raiders and stuff. So we'll see how that works. I also have this little um this little pouch thing here. So I'm gonna try and put this pouch on the back. I still have my old Vec model. Yeah, man. Uh, Azure car. Like, I had my old Vec model. Like, um, my Days of Destruction. And it had been sitting in a box for, let's say, 10 years. And then when I started streaming, I looked at it and I went, you know what I need to do? I need to literally grab my old Vec model and paint it. So I literally grabbed my old Vec model. And I hashtag just put paint on it, folks. Kyle says, looking forward to our next big game once this nonsense is over. Yes, 100%. Once this virus has decided, or once we as humans find a way to tackle it, we shall be able to once again do the mega game, which I'm super, super pumped about. Okay, so I put a little pouch thing there with some vials and whatnot and a grenade. That'll actually help break up that little monotony there. Cool. Yeah, I like it. And then, of course, you have this guy here. Let's try hold it in place. Boom. And does this. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about this is that the models is sort of like broken up. If he like was down like this, that'd be perfect in terms of the fluidity of the model. Like leaping out of the way. So I probably have to shave this arm just a little bit to change the angle a bit. So we wanted the angle to be a little bit down because what I was talking about when I converted these models is about lines. So you've got lines that essentially create movement on the model, which is very relevant here. You've got the line of the dagger and the leg and the, the face going that way. And then you've got the line of that leg and that arm going that way. Now with this one here, you know, you've got that line, that line, that line. There's lots of lines here. So ideally what we'd want is, is a rifle or something that goes that way to kind of break through that leg or down this way to do it that way or straight down that way or this line there. Because that line, as you can see, this line goes with the leg, which actually works really well for the pose of the model, right? Anyway, that's a whole bunch of like posing theory when you want like a model to look really cool. Ultimentra says, I saw a battle report recently where largest squad incubi plus Drazar cut through just about everything they touched, even vehicles. Oh, yes. Drazar is, like, they're good. It's just if they kill what they touch and then the opponent can shoot them, they're all dead, right? They don't they don't last very long. <laughs> so that can be a bit of an issue. Here it goes. Yeah. Here it goes. Yeah. Perfect. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith, make the cut, and hope that it sticks. Something else I like doing is with these Dark Eldar models, the the butt of the gun is like almost basically melded into the shoulder pad. So you cut a little bit into the sh into the the butt of the gun here to kind of create a distance between the shoulder pad and the gun, and it and it kind of gives it a little bit more <laughs> realism. <laughs> Instead of it being like stuck on there. <laughs> okay, let's see if I got the angle right or did I mess it up? Perfect. So the angle seems to be good because then it'll follow the leg as he's like leaping out of the way. And now all we need is a arm that can do the same. So this arm, definitely not the arm to use it. As you can see here, that arm goes out that way. So I need an arm that sort of like curves around the front of the gun. Microscopic Drukari Snickers. 120 cabalites on foot with dark lances and blasters. That is also true. 
Yeah, we can make sure that the tables, Kyle, fit the amount of orcs you're going to bring. I think it's going to be amazing when it get when we sh get to show off your entire orc collection and all of our painted models. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Exendar says, uh, how big is your Dark Elder army? Uh, about 10,000 points, I would assume. I haven't, I haven't, you know, it slowly gets bigger over time, you know, but I, I want to say it was about eight. Eight to ten thousand points. So that's if I take everything. You know, I keep on adding little things here and there. But, you know, it's a hundred points here, hundred points there. Then I convert random stuff like this and add like a whole squad out of nothing. You know, that can be super fun as well. Okay, here we go. I think that arm. Nope, that arm won't do. We need an arm that can kind of. Oh, there we go. That arm is a across the chest arm. Perfect. So that arm goes across the chest like that. And we have this gun do this. And we can go this arm down here. Will it fit? Not really. So in that case, if we can't do that, then maybe a completely different approach is needed for the arm here. There's a really cool arm that I really like. Oh, the pointing arm. Oh, I like that one. That's a That's an arm we can definitely use. And you can literally pointing forward to be like, that way. Hmm? Yeah. See? Oh, so good. Look at that. Oh, triple. I love it. I'm singing about it a lot. Pictures! <laughs> I think I did a, a post on how to make your Dark Elder army, uh, or how to build an army list, and I put most of my collection out on the table to visualize. It's visualization is one of the first steps that I recommend when you're building an, an army list. And uh, it's it, it, it factored me putting pro most of my army out on the table. So if you want to take a look at it, I think that's probably the easiest one to take a look at. Uh, but yes, I will try and take some pictures Right now, I'm working on the next video uh, duet, so mission one of the ITC. If you haven't f uh, watched that ITC series that I'm doing, I'm doing it in two videos on a session. So the first session will be, well, the first video is always free for everybody to watch, and it's like general strategies, tactics on the specific thing we're talking about. And the second video goes into a lot more tactical detail, um, and we'll be breaking down every single mission and uh, and whatnot of the ITC series. So that's really cool. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so time to put this on there. Let's put some, okay. So, very important part of this, you wanna make sure that the angle is the same when it comes to like the leg to kind of keep that fluid nature. And then what we're going to do is that um, that arm is going to point out that way and it's going to be at the same plane as the flatness of here. It's just going to point out like this and it's going to basically round the model up, which is going to be really cool. But something I have to do is I have to sort of do a little bit of extra cutting here just to make sure it's nice and flat. There we go. And we can put a whole bunch of glue in here. Now, don't worry about it being perfect. A lot of the times, just the glue and the paint will actually do. Once you've primed everything like the color that you want, black, blue, whatever, you can always work on something specifically. We also have to put the, so they're gonna, he's gonna be pointing out this way. Just have to cut a little bit extra from that piece there at the top. A little bit extra glue on there. Back to the table. Really like the ITC videos. Can't wait to get back to the table testing newish secondaries. Have another time. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you've had a game during lockdown. You're not taking lockdown very seriously now, are you? So yeah, I cannot wait for all of us. Okay, there we go, Mr. Pointing Man. Yeah. 
he's the blaster, he's going to be like, that way. We need to go that way. This thing needs to blow up. He's like, oh, let's go, let's go. That way, that way. See? Oh, look at that. I'm really excited about that. And you can see, so line, 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 line. Great. And then we've got his head. And as you can see here, it's sort of like all pointing that same sort of direction. So the head will kind of intersect that there. And it'll kind of round out the model nicely. And of course, we're going to get one of these Helion shoulder pads, which, by the way, have been amazing. Little Helion shoulder pads like this have been really, really useful. The base you use right now is quite nice. Where is it from? Uh, these bases are the Necromunda bases from Necromunda. I think you can buy packs of them to like base your models in like a Necromunda style. So they are readily available for people to use. Stop, won't stop loving you. Boy, I can't stop, won't stop loving you. Just like that. And then you go up and down and around. Oh my goodness, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Come on. Come on, come on. Oh no. Way too much. Woo. It's dangerous when you put too much plastic glue on a plastic model and it like just melts everything. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you put it on like the general area where it's supposed to go. There you go, boom. So now I've got two shoulder pads. We've got a pointing guy with a blaster. We just need a head. Uh, when I'm doing cool little conversions like this, I try and make sure that all the heads are different. You know, so that, you know, they kind of fit into the narrative. You used to be able to find Necromunda base packs for cheap online, but it seems they've dried up quite recently. Well, I can see why. Like, they're a fantastic little basing set. Like, I, I got, I have 20 of them or whatever. So I'm using five for this, and then I'll probably use five for another set of like witches or something like that. So we'll see till you get the too much amount. True. No glue, no glue, no glue. Tidal wave of glue. That's that's exactly how that works. So be careful when you're putting your glue out. So another thing here I'm doing is I'm getting through all the little, um, getting all this little mold lines off. And we're almost done our little project of converting these um, these two Raider Riders into models that you can use onto the tabletop part of your Cablite Warrior Squad. It's kind of what we're doing. So give yourselves a round of applause if you have been doing this. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did like uh, the video, make sure you share, like, subscribe, click that notification button. If you'd like to support what I do, consider hopping over to the Patreon page and becoming a denizen, part of a global community of like-minded positive gamers that help support what I do. You too can hop onto there and get access to some pre-release videos, extra videos that are exclusive and constant commentary and content, as well as list building advice, even personalized coaching. Plug done. Okay, there we go. So now we put the head on. Just make sure the head follows the arm and is in line with that leg there. You could give it a bit of a twist if you needed to, to kind of make it more twisty. But there you go, folks. Our first raider with a witch cult venom. Right, so you've got, looks like he was meant to be leaping off of that little platform. So I hope you guys enjoyed us building that little guy together. You too can build one like this. So you put him off to the side, let him dry, and then we can finish up Mr. Hanging Off of a Lamp Post. <laughs> Mr. I'm, fl okay, so all of these, of course, they're all, you know, held with the right hand, of course. They're hanging off with the right hand, which means 
we need to find either a left-handed gun or convert something, which is why I usually have the most excellent ability to create something special, which is where these guys come into play. Now in the Raider and sets, you get these rifles, and these rifles are just straight up rifles. They, they're just a rifle, which is fantastic, because now we have an ability to use a rifle for this model who's literally, I don't know, surveying the battlefield or whatever. You know, he's just coming around. Like, uh, you could at the same time, if you want to make him the Saberite of the squad, have him with a blast pistol or something nasty, like holding some sort of super weapon or whatever. Uh, like, you could grab one of the cool, like, um, pikes or something and put a pike on him so he's, like, lunging down like he would on the raider, just straight up stabbing someone. Or, you know, you could use this arm and cut these off and hold a pistol if you wanted to make him, like, hold, like, a splinter pistol or a blast pistol and just be, like, popping, popping a shot off like that, which is pretty cool. So there are a lot of different options that you can use. There's also the, I believe, there's one here that's from the Scourge kit, which is a little different than your average one. And that one, I believe, is this this way, which is interesting. So, because technically, yeah. Yeah, so it goes this way, but he's like holding it, like about to throw it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like, I like that. That's cool. Like, look at that. He's like, well, yeah. Look at that. He's just leaning off right here, like, yeah, throw it. <laughs> but there is a another one that I really like, um, and this is a piece that is from. I'm not sure what kit it is, but it is a little hucking a grenade one. I just got half of the Blood of the Phoenix, Poison Blade, and Raider Venom. They're waiting in boxes at the moment for Skitari to get painted up. Nice. It's always fun to have the Skitari to get all painted up. Always gives us a nice little thing to kind of work on. Ah, right, here we go. Boom. So another one that I like doing is... This is a simple one, so I'll probably just keep it really simple. Because he's more of a showpiece is he's going to grab a grenade, and then he's basically got a grenade like this, and he can lob a grenade out, right? Now, that's a that's another simple one that you can use, but I'm probably not going to use it for this guy. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to use, like, one of these arms that allows him to hold... Um, trying very much to find one that's, like... Decent. Nope. I wish it would be like a holding. It'd be holding his butt. Oh my butt. Um. Now this can be some of the 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 stuff that like takes the longest. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but what do we want him to do? What is he literally doing while he's like? That I guess that grenade it seems like a pretty good idea, just like a grenade. You know, like how can we get him to be holding? I could get him a blade or something where he could be holding a blade, right? <clears throat> Toggle goes on his back. Rifle fits perfectly. Do you have the scourge finger pointer? I do. I just use the finger pointer on this model here. So, I guess you could potentially use... Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. There's this um, there's this kit here, which has, f like, the, the rifle in, like, a holster. Right? So, I guess we could potentially put the rifle in a holster like this. Basically, showing off that he's, like... And then have him lobbing a grenade. I, I really like that idea, actually. I've never used this piece on a model before, which means I'm even more excited about trying that right now. But thank you, Prankster, for that little um, little suggestion. That's fantastic. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get, uh, so he's gonna have all his gear on his back, because he's literally, apparently, just trudging along the city with a bunch of gear on his back, you know, exploring, I guess. And he's gonna be lobbing a grenade, because that's kind of what he wants to do. Even though Cab Light Warriors don't have grenades. <laughs> they used to. <laughs> you could used to give them to them, I think. Not anymore. I wish they had grenades. Grenades are great. Like, a lot of the times, like, my witch grenades do more damage than, like, their splinter pistols. Because they're better in, like, every way. In, like, some scenarios. You know, having uh, strength 4 and minus... Oh, no! Strength 4 and minus uh, 1 AP on a grenade is nothing to sneeze at. It's, it's a pretty good grenade. Matt Vindicavi, good morning. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. We're almost done. We're almost finished here, but at least you came and said hello. That makes me makes me smile inside. So thank you very much for coming to say hello to me while I am doing hobby. Okay, perfect. So we can literally put a little bit of glue, little bit of glue, little bit of glue, big deluge of glue. Come on, come on. Where are you, Glue? Oh my goodness gracious. This is like the most annoying part of the glue process. Ah! Definitely don't want to pull it out too far because then the whole glue goes everywhere. Come on. Today's stream seemed crazy fast. Oh yeah, I know. It's like already time to go and today we've actually accomplished quite a lot when it comes to the stream. We've uh, talked, we've chatted, we've hobbied, we've built uh, some really cool looking miniatures. So thank you to everybody who's tuned in and kind of, uh, you know, having some fun with us and rocking and rolling. There you go. Look at that. Boom. He's got his, he's got his rifle on his back, so it's WYSIWYG. That's right, everybody. WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. If you have any final questions, let me know. Alpharius, why don't you start getting your stream set up so we can go Radia and make sure that we're all having some fun raiding each other and being a good, good, um, good party people. Cool. And then we've got Mr. Grenade Pack. Okie dokie. Mr. Grenade Pack coming right up. Boom. Actually, what we'll do is we'll move it just a little bit further back like this to make sure it coincides with that leg there. Yeah, it's a little bit further back, but it, it just makes it feel a bit more realistic. And we can get a nice head for that one. Who would be lobbing a grenade? This guy. This guy would be. Look at him. He looks like the kind of guy that would be lobbing a grenade. Alpharius is rocking and ready to go. Awesome, awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Alpharius. So make sure you leave a comment if you liked what you see. Thank you so much, guys. You know, like this, we'll just show off our finished product here in a second. And this has been a little tutorial on how to turn your raider and uh, some Venom riders into actual models that you can use on the tabletop. So I hope you found this informative tutorial. Pass it off to uh, Dark Eld, our friend of yours, who is always looking to try and get more models built and painted. That's right, look at him. He definitely would be the guy that loves that grenade. Look at him. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that his head matches that leg there. So he's looking out towards that leg. So you've got that line, you've got that line, you've got that line there, and you've got an intersecting line. And there you go. You have a Cablite Warrior made specifically out of the Raider kit. This is one with the least amount of conversion. This is literally just 
just using a little bit of things on the base. So that's our first piece that we worked on today. Uh, and this is the second piece we worked on today, the Leaping Blaster Warrior as well. So if you have any questions, make sure you put them in stream. But we are going to raid Alferis' channel. Make sure you check him out on Twitch. And I hope you guys found this little tutorial useful because that's how this went. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm actually super excited about that. Now let's go and raid Alferis' channel. Um, if he's live, hopefully he's live. He is not live yet. We will in a second. So I just want to say thank you every much, uh, very much to everybody. We'll be back tomorrow morning to um we'll be back tomorrow morning 11 a.m eastern standard time on our um just put paint on it segment isolation station number 19 which is crazy 19 days of isolation so far and i'm counting every single one and of course you can uh, be here and join me if you'd like to uh, <laughs> it should be live i should be live okay perfect you were live you were just waiting you have your little preview page thingy up. There we go. Now you're live. Okay, let's raid Al Ferris' channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You guys are all awesome. And I will catch you on the flip side. I'll chat to you on Discord. If you want to play Tabletop Simulator, reach out to me and all that good stuff as well. Thank you very much, everybody. And I shall see you on the flip side. Perfect timing. <laughs> Eduardo Paredes. I know we just finished up today, <laughs> but it will be up for you so you can watch it. And uh, we didn't have time to go through all the conversions, um, but thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Other than that, folks, I'll see you on the flip side. Scary signing off until next time. Scary out. Bye, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. And that's it. If you'd like more, make sure you check the little schedule that's up on your screen. We do a daily hobby stream. Um, and if you'd like to support the channel, always hop on over to the Patreon page. Or find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, or Reddit as well. Or The Art of War if you need any help with anything at all. I'm Skari. This has been hashtag Just Put Paint On It. Bye.